nice. Thank you for having me here. It's really an honor to see all of you here this morning and just to see what God is doing. And if you might say, ah, I'm not sure who you are. I've been here in Malaysia for 19 years and now officially I can say that I have been in Malaysia as long as I have been in Germany before. I left Germany when I was 19 years old. I have been in Malaysia for 19 years. So I'm just as much Malaysian as I am German. So thank you <laughs> for welcoming me here all these years and it's just an honor to be here. You know what? I was thinking about the devotion and when I was uh, reading Zechariah 9 verse 9, I came about a phrase that really caught my attention. And in Zechariah 9 verse 9 it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Now when the Bible says, Behold, it is, it is a, a word, it's a phrase for us to stop, pause, and see what is coming next. In other words, it draws our attention to whatever comes next. So when it says, behold, your king is coming, it means, wait a minute, pay attention, your king is coming. Now, why would the Bible says, behold, pay attention? Because it is easily missed. So if we don't focus, if we don't fix our focus on the coming king, it is easy for us to miss him. So we have to make sure that we focus on him and him alone to make sure that we won't miss him. Now, if you go into the dictionary and you look what focus actually is, you will see that a definition of focus is the center of interest or activity. Focus, another definition says, focus is what you pay particular attention to. So whatever is in the in the center of our interest, whatever is in the center of our activity, what we are paying close attention to, that is where our focus is. So what you are thinking about the most, that is where your focus is. What you are spending your time with, that is where your focus is. Whatever you are doing and paying particular attention to, what is important to you, that is where your focus is. So the question is not, do I have a focus? The question is, where does my focus lie? Is it on things that are surrounding me, my everyday life, my career, my family, my hobbies? The question is not, do I have a focus? The question is, where does my focus lie? And so I believe we have to start and put God back into the picture and say, God, I want to be focused on you. Because the focus, the thing about focus is, is what you are, what you are in focus, what you see, that is becomes very clear. I believe you will see a picture here of my little daughter, my youngest one. I have five kids. She is the youngest one. And just last week, we put up our Christmas decorations, the Ficus household. We love Christmas. We put our Christmas tree up, our garlands, our lights, everything went up. So then one night, we came back from dinner, and my daughter said she wants to take a picture in front of the Christmas tree. So I put her in front of the Christmas tree. I took out my phone, and I, I set her there, and then uh, we, I took a picture of her. And you know, it is amazing nowadays what the, what the phone can do already, right? So this picture that you see was taken in portrait mode. Now I know all the younger ones, you're very familiar with portrait mode. You have used it for your Instagram feed, for your TikToks numerous times. I'm pretty <laughs> not so active on social media. But so I took this picture. So what you see is now, she is in focus, but everything else is blurred out. She's, everything else is out of focus. She is in focus, everything else is out of focus. Then I took another picture and I purposely focused on the Christmas tree. So now the Christmas tree and the background is in focus and she is out of focus. And that is how it works in our life. Whatever we focus on, we will see clearly. It is sharp, it is clear, it is obvious, but everything that is not in our focus is a little bit out of focus. So when it comes to God, it is easy to focus on our everyday life. What we are confronted with every day, with work, with family, friends, our everything that we have going on every day. 
But the reality is that means God can easily get out of focus. And so we have to say, no, I want to put God back into my focus. I want to fix my focus on God and what God can really do in my life. And I believe that is something that we have to put our mind to. So my first point that you can see on the screen is also that we cannot focus on our lack. Now, I took a portion of scripture, an entire chapter that is found in Acts chapter 3. I will not take the whole uh, time to read the entire chapter, but basically what happens is in Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter and John go up to the temple to pray. As they come to the temple, they are now confronted with a beggar who was begging and he was there from birth. He was lame from birth. So as, he, as they approached the temple, the beggar put out their hand to, to ask for some money. Then Peter looks at him and then he says these famous words, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And then he become, the ankles become strong, the Bible says. He stands up. He starts jumping up and down, shouting praises to God. He runs into the temple. Everybody realizes, hey, this is the guy who is actually lame from birth. What is he doing running around, jumping, praising God? It causes such a commotion that now even the religious leaders come out to see what is happening see the entire thing playing out in front of them they're going to peter and john remand them put them in prison overnight now that is what happens in Acts chapter 3. so now what we can see and learn about focus is what we said the first time is to not focus on our lack what we don't have so that's where it says then peter and john says silver and gold i do not have but see there is a word in here it said but now but in the English grammar is a conjunction that highlights two contrasting ideas so the first idea the first part of the verse says silver and gold I do not have but there's no full stop but the conjunction now shows that what comes next will be in contrast to what is in the front of the verse so it says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, I will give to you. He didn't put a full stop there. Because he could have easily said, silver and gold I do not have, full stop. Then he would have focused on his lack, what he didn't have in his life. But that's not where he stopped. He said, silver and gold I do not have, but there's something else coming. And so I wonder what would happen if we don't focus on our lack instead of looking at the things that we don't have be open to the possibility what we might have that goes unnoticed so we cannot l focus on the lack and negativity in our life we have to be open for more now the things that I mentioned very briefly I have put together from studies from articles from research papers from the field of psychology and even psychologists agree that we cannot focus on lack or negativity why because first of all negativity will build more negativity so the more we focus on negative things in our life the more and more prevalent they will become in our life the more we look for negative things the more you will find negative things so it says in one of the articles, constantly dwelling on what we lack tends to foster a negative mindset. So if we focus on lack, if we focus on what we don't have, it will foster a mindset that becomes very negative. And the more we see the negative, the more obvious it becomes and even more things will all of a sudden now appear in your life that is negative. So we are doing ourselves no favor if we are focusing on lack in our life. Another thing says, it says if we focus on lack, it will impact our mental health. A focus on lack can contribute to feeling disappointment and frustration. And this can have a detrimental effect on our mental health. So again, if we focus on what we don't have, if we focus on things that we are missing out, that we are desiring but we don't have, our mindset, our mental health 
will be affected. Another one says, if we focus on lack, it will limit our personal growth. When we fixate on what we lack, we may overlook the resources and opportunities that we currently do possess. That is the thing. It is almost like a downward negative spiral. If we look for negative things, guess what? You will find them. But the more you find them, the more negative you become. And it's like a, a downward spiral taking you deeper and deeper into negativity. So we cannot focus on lack. And the last one that I found in one of the research papers, it says if we focus on lack and negativity, it will affect our confidence. It will affect our confidence. Constantly thinking about what we lack may erode our self-confidence. It will create a mindset that emphasizes limitations rather than possibilities. So now, not even thinking about the Bible, even in the field of psychology, they all agree if you tend to look at a negative, it will build more negativity. So don't focus on those things. Now, what does the Bible say? After all, we are looking at the Bible as our ultimate authority, right? So in Matthew 6 verse 31, it says, Do not worry, saying, What shall I eat or what shall I drink? What shall we wear? For even the pagans run after all these things. But your heavenly Father knows you and knows your need. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. But what does it say right at the beginning of the verse? It says, do not worry. So even the Bible, what, even later on when it goes on, God will provide. It says, but do not worry. Don't focus on worry, anxiety, and stress, and the negativity that you do have going on in our life. Because if we are real, we have to admit lack. Negativity is real. We are facing those things in our life, but we cannot focus on them. So do not worry. Because God will give you all these things as well. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. What does it say again at the beginning? Do not be anxious about anything. Again, do not focus on negativity don't be anxious but look at what God can do so don't look don't focus on the lack that you might have but look at the possibility that is my second point we have to focus on our opportunities opportunities that are still there Acts chapter 3 verse 6 says then Peter said silver and gold I do not have but what I have I will give to you what I do have I am willing to share what I do have I will give see he was looking for an opportunity he could have said silver and gold I do not have reality that was really reality but he would have focused on his lack instead he said I do not have money I do not have riches I don't have anything materialistic to share but what I do have I am willing to share he was willing to look for the opportunity willing to look for something that he did have in his life and that is what sharing about god really means he said you know what i don't have riches but what i do have i am willing to give to you i remember when i was growing up in germany i was running for my school and i represented my school in the 100 meter sprint 100 meter dash and 10k cross country that was my discipline i was good in that but we were looking for someone who would do the javelin throw in one of the competitions representing our school. So the coach put out a big announcement into the entire high school. Hey, we are needing someone to do the javelin throw for our next competition that is statewide. But nobody came forward. Nobody wanted to do it. So he approached me and said, Stefan, I know you are a runner, but I want you to try out for the javelin throw. And I was like, I don't think so. I can run. That is what I'm good at. I am a runner. I am not a javelin thrower. He said, never mind. I want you to try out. So, okay, I went there. I tried it out. Turns out I was pretty good at it. So the thing is, I'm still holding my high school record after all these years in the javelin throw. Now, I'm not telling you this to ring my own bell so you can say, oh, very good, very good. Well, maybe a little bit. But here's my point. 
there was an opportunity and I didn't even consider trying out because that is not what I thought I was good at. But my coach pushed me, said, no, there's an opportunity you try out. See, he saw an opportunity that I did not even see myself. And I wonder if there's opportunities in our life that we are not even aware of right now. Sometimes it takes the Holy Spirit to put his finger on something in our life and say, hey, you know what? You are praying, you are seeking God, but there is an opportunity right in front of you. Or maybe sometimes it takes somebody else to come and to show you and say, you know what? Actually, there is an opportunity right in front of you. So we have to be willing to look at opportunities. And my last point is we have to focus on Jesus. Don't focus on your lack, focus on your opportunities, but most importantly, focus on Jesus. Acts chapter 3 verse 16 says, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now why did he say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he wanted to make sure that the blind man and the people now witnessing around were absolutely clear of who he was talking about. He did not just say, or in the name of Jesus. He did not even say in the name of Jesus Christ. He said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because he wanted to make sure that there is no confusion. There is no uncertainty. There is clarity of who he was talking about. Jesus Christ. There was only one who came from Nazareth. So he said, you know, focus on him. And that is what we have to do in our life. We have to focus on Jesus Christ because he is the one who can bring help. Our help comes from him. So we focus on him saying, God, you are the one, Jesus, you are the one who can bring something into my life. I need to focus on him. And I am just wondering what could happen if we would be so single-minded and focus on Jesus, focus on what he can do in our life that will completely transform and turn our lives upside down. And even the people that we are ministering to, the people that we are leading, the people that is uh, under our care, what they could experience if we would only focus on the coming king. So don't focus on lack, don't focus on negativity, look for opportunities, but most importantly, focus on Jesus, because that is where our help comes from. That is what we can really uh, have him come into our life and we can see things happening that we did not even knew were possible in the first place. Amen. Let's just pray very quickly.